All right, everyone. This is kind of a uh, bonus to our video collection. Uh, if you, I've been getting a few requests from some of the new members of the site about tips to go about solving certain problems, and I was a little reluctant at first to kind of give some info, but I said, you know what? One or two problems isn't going to hurt. This way to give you a little inspiration and get you up on the leaderboard. So. What's going to happen is you have the question here, this is problem one in our site, which is about factorials. So the question reads, given the first few factorials, uh, what is the sum of the first 15 factorials not including zero factorial? Now zero factorial is one by its mathematical rule. Uh, so you can see sort of from the programming aspect that really it involves a loop. So you can see 1 times 2, 1 times 2 times 3, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. It is a for loop or a while loop depending on how you write it of course. Um, but it's also a nested loop because you still have to do it 15 times. So let's see how to write the program. So this solution will be in C++. You can do it in any language of course. But let's kind of see what variables you need. Now, because anything past maybe 11 or 12 factorial doesn't fit in a regular variable, which is 32 bits, the best advice to use, you can use an unsigned int, uh, but you still can run into trouble around 14 factorial. So the best way to do it is to do a long long, which is a 64-bit variable. Um, so certainly bigger in capacity. And since we're asking for the sum, let's declare a sum variable, starting of course at zero since we haven't done anything. And let's declare another variable called answer. Now answer will be used each time to calculate the factorial. So now as mentioned we have our for loop. Say int i is 1, i less than or equal to 15, I plus plus. This loop will run, so I can put a little comment, be the 15 factorials we are looking for. Okay, so that's the I loop. So it will run 15 times. But your inner loop will still start at 1 however only go to what the i value is and the reason behind that is because say the i is five that means you're looking to find five factorial so you want j to go from one through five so now simply what goes in the j loop is that the answer times equals j so i'll put a comment one times 2, times 3, times 4, etc. And at the very end of it, you just append to the sum whatever factorial you just calculated. But there's one little piece of the puzzle left. In order for you to get the correct answer, you need to guarantee that answer is always starting at 1 each time the i value changes. Otherwise, you're going to get an extremely huge number, which is completely wrong. <laughs> so make sure that after the i changes, so before you do your factorial count with the j loop, to reset answer. And now, once you're at the very end, see out the sum, which is the answer you're looking for. So let's run and we'll see what happens. Alright, so that's the answer that we get. Uh, don't quite know the trillions or zillions, but big number. Okay. So since I had already answered this question, this is exactly the answer. And are we right? looks good to me. So 
as a little bonus for you this evening. You can go online, register for free at cstutoringcenter.com, and uh, punch in the answer to this question. So that'll get you up on the leaderboard. Plenty more questions. Uh, I'll probably do a couple more of these as time goes on. So good luck to you, and start climbing that leaderboard.